Right Honorable Speaker, the issue of sanctions. I, in your communication, Right Honorable Speaker, you said you are not bothered and you don't care about these sanctions. In fact, you mentioned that the only visa you are concerned about is the visa to Vukedia. And so you don't care about the visas to the US and to the UK and so on. I, I'm, I'm now surprised why then you, you seem very bothered. Because if you say you only care about a visa to Vukedia, I am, why, why do I you seem very bothered and lobby. angry lobby. about this issue? I think it lobby. should not bother you, I right? I am Honorable. not bothered at all. I am talking for 48 million Ugandans outside there. That, that's all right. Um, and I am representing, I'm sitting on this seat for the 48 million Ugandans there. And secondly, I don't get handouts from those countries. There is an order. I, uh, I don't uh, know why uh, someone wants to put the speaker order. on order. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, no one has said you get handouts order. from uh, these order. countries. Order. We are talking about... Order, Madam Speaker. Order. Right, Honorable Speaker, we, we are talking about the sanctions which indicated uh, corruption, Mabati theft, and all of these different things. Uh, Th it, that which it, you're saying is a different matter. I don't know if somebody is accusing you of getting handouts from these countries... That has not come up, and that's not the issue. For me, my concern is, if you're saying you're only bothered about a visa to Vukedia, then you shouldn't be consumed by this issue, right, Honorable Speaker? You shouldn't be, because you also seem to be rallying us to join you in being angry over this matter. Order. Because your I concern am, uh, is Vukedia, order. right, Honorable Speaker? No, leader, leader of opposition. But finally, right, Honorable Speaker, uh, uh, I want to implore government. Uh, switch on, switch on. I, I want to thank you. I want to implore government, right, Honorable Speaker. Government, do not wait for foreign countries to sanction individuals, whether it be involved in Mabati theft, in corruption, and so on. Take action. Why, why do you wait for that? And then you begin to complain. When you're going to beg for aid, you don't complain. When they say now that we give you aid, that aid uh, is not be stolen. Order from uh, he's asking for clarification. I'll get it shortly. Uh, honor don't, members, don't wait honor as government. Members. Take action against corruption. Leader, leader of opposition. Leader of opposition. Leader of opposition. Na okay, first, first of all, I would like to thank the leader of opposition for the submission he's making, right, Honorable Speaker. The clarification I want to seek from Lope is that for purpose of the speaker, is there any record by any competent court of law in Uganda that she has been involved in any corruption matter? Number two, is there, as far as we are all aware, that they took former colleagues who are our colleague members of parliament that before courts of law, have the, have the case been adjudicated and confirmed that they are guilty? So, if we, are talking about to, if we are talking about the rule of law, was it in order for that respectable country to impose sanction on such individuals? And Honorable, I'll uh, uh, has something to say. Right, Honorable, he sought clarification from me. I thought in a minute. I no, I've given uh, him. I'm the speaker. Okay, I can take that. Most of blood. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think we are... Lop, lop, maybe perhaps should be concentrating on more important things. I, I, I want to, I want to, uh -uh, I want to, uh -uh. this is my, uh, uh, just perhaps, that means, perhaps. right, Honorable Speaker, you're concentrating on non-issues according to I, Honorable I am, Kiro. I am raising my point of order. I'm on a point yes. of order. You're the one who raised I'm the issue, right, of, Honorable I'm on Speaker. a point of order. Uh, uh, what what Lop is he, talking he about? He's saying you're discussing non-issues, right, Honorable Speaker. I don't know what, if he's in order. What Lop is talking is important. He's talking about something important. But, uh, but what I'm also telling Lob, that Lob, don't even deceive yourself that I am hurt. Me, the Anita I know. Me, to be hurt over those sanctions. Forget. 
That, that's okay, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Peter Gwang was seeking clarification from me regarding rule of law. I'll educate you a little bit because I'm a lawyer. Article 28.3a of our country's constitution talks about presumption of innocence. That's our constitution. Now, the way sanctions operate, and I don't know whether we should be discussing sanctions issued by a country which has the prerogative to issue their own sanctions. Sanctions are There's not subject... I was Never. clarifying. Sanctions are not subject of your local There's jurisprudence a here. Matter. It's a diplomatic tool There's a which... Pro which uh, There's a pro there's a procedure matter. Nathan, we have not started. <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker. We, are, we have been, we have spent about an hour. Give us time. one hour. Right, Honorable Speaker. In one of your statements, you guided that the Minister of Foreign Affairs should come with a comprehensive statement. On a matter like this, the first expectation in diplomacy would be the ministry to summon the ambassador of the UK government and state the position of government of Uganda on this matter. And then be able to report to parliament so that we can have a debate. Is it procedurally right for us to continue discussing this matter when actually we have not heard comprehensively on the steps that government has taken? to engage the other country. Are we proceeding right, right Honorable Speaker? Honorable Members, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, we will expect a comprehensive response on the action that you've taken on this. And I don't want anybody to think I am bothered of whatever is happening, but I am doing this for uh, anything on me touches everybody in this house. I am the leader of this house. So, 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 so when, when I say, some of you have properly, like, uh, <laughs> I have not said search. I have not said, stop, stop measure, uh, putting search in my mouth. She? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I share your concerns and the concerns of this House about the sanctions that were impo imposed on the head of this very institution, the Right Honorable Speaker, Anita Mo, and two other former ministers. Honorable Chitutu and uh, Honorable Agnes Nandutu. Right, Honorable Speaker, I was in this house when we passed that anti-homosexuality law. And I can assure you, we as Parliament, we stand together on issues of morality of this country. There is no doubt about that. And I think each and every member of the House, you can't say it is the Speaker, it is so, it was a collective effort of the entire House. So if there is such an indictment, it's an indictment on the rest of, on all of us. That is important. And to that extent, I want us to stand firm. We shall get to know where it ends. We, st we stand by you, the Right Honorable Speaker, in as far as enacting of that law is concerned, if that is the, if that is the casus belli of all this that is unfolding. But I would hasten also to add, Right Honorable Speaker and members, that for, mat for, for us to sit by there is a lot of ramifications and what our relationship with the Commonwealth shall be. The Speaker is the head. There are those engagements on annual basis. She's the chair of the Speakers and Presiding Officers. So I think even those in UK, I saw the Deputy Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Mitchell, he ought to know 
the ramifications and the implications of sanctioning a speaker of a country. She is the head of the third arm of government. So there must be foreign affairs and government. You must tell us, how do we as a country proceed from here? What are our bilateral arrangements? What is the fate of our development cooperation that we share with the UK and the Commonwealth? Can we withdraw from the UK, from the Commonwealth? And I think the answer is no. Then what is the way forward? Because the head of the third arm who represents us who are seated here cannot go to the Commonwealth. In other words, we are decapitated. We are decapitated. We must state it. We must take the, the, the implications. How are we going to engage with the other 56 other countries under the umbrella of the Commonwealth? So it's a question that we must answer, and government must answer that. It was peculiar that the president even chose to keep quiet about it the other day at the Labor Day celebrations. Because it, is, it isn't as easy as it comes. It isn't, honorable members. There is some weight on it. And I don't want to think that UK was not aware of the backlash of the fallout in all this. And to me, right, honorable speaker, it yet presents another opportunity. Uh, on how, uh, as a country. Minister, I hope you're taking notes of what Sage is raising. On how the country is proceeding on the question of corruption. To have your speaker sanctioned on account of larceny. Larceny is such a grave matter. What is the rest of the country now? Probably I think they are now touching on the speaker to tell you, to tell us as a country, how we are proceeding. A speaker of an institution, the third arm. So I think, right, honorable speaker, when issues of corruption arise, why don't we get the opportunity to discuss them and for government to handle the same to its full conclusion? This is the problem. We are stuck. We cannot even present our voices to be heard well because the issue of the iron sheets was greatly mismanaged. It was greatly mismanaged. The Rogorobis, the Chitutu, the Nandutus were those arranged before court. And to me, having cabinet ministers and ministers attending court, then in the afternoon they go to attend cabinet. What? 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 what, what indicators are we giving to the international community? So for me, on the question of homosexuality, I want us to disaggregate it. That one, we all stand together. But on the question of corruption, all members, I beg that you really, I beg your indulgence, that we must tackle it. We can't let it go. The other day, we had an opportunity to look at ourselves as parliament. Eh? When the issue of the handshake the service awards came. Right, honorable speaker, I've never given us the opportunity to debate it. Despite uh, my constant I'll standing, do that. I'll do despite that. my constant standing here, can we have a look at ourselves? I'll give or must you. we hide ourselves now in, 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 in the same clock? For me, I'm not part of that. If the UK is sanctioning and taking, targeting the corrupt of this country, it's because we as a country have failed. We have failed, we have let down the people of Uganda. Where everybody knew, some ministers said that the anxious came through their windows to their compounds and they were let, they were let scot free. The unfortunate ones, the city, we are ready before court and others are continuing to occupy the front bench. And the president made a very simple premise that I'm going to follow them, I'm going to follow them. Where, where, where is the following you are talking about? So to me, honorable members, Right, honorable speaker, you better seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity and say no to corruption. Lead the way so that as a country we can stand by you. But when this institution is full of, 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 of loopholes, the allegations of corruption, the service awards are bound and we cannot debate them, we cannot discuss them, what should we do? It is only seeming that now the foreign countries are the ones doing the job we are supposed to do. So I don't want members to hide they about, so, ab about sovereignty of the country. They cannot search. Yes. 
uh, honorable government, you respond on the issues of, of the headships. But I'm telling you, the foreign country cannot, we're a sovereign country. I mean, UK cannot come and run our country. They cannot. Thanks for the guidance, right to speak. We are going to handle the issue of the corruption that is okay. Perceived corruption. You know, somebody should be proved that, like the, 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 the ministers who are in the court. There are so many people about how many, Honorable Boa, do you, do you want to say something? Mm. Before you can come up, before you can come up, let us be open. I'm really making my humble and honest call to you, right, Honorable Speaker. Let us start with ourselves. We cannot continue hiding. We are condemning other foreign countries when we have let down this country. The other day they said you are corrupt to pass the, the, the RAPEX bills. Were you corrupt? Uh, were you bribed? Who was bribed in this house? Right, Honorable Speaker, there no, was I'm asking. I'm, I'm not asking you, Sechi. Yes. I'm asking members, who was bribed in this house? Right, right, right Honorable Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I, I, you know, I, you, you know, Sechi, people, people will say whatever they will want to say, but what matters is, have you proved what it is? Have you proved? Uh, you see, information, my brother. Uh, you know, colleagues, it is very important that. Uh, we look at international relations and international law. Whereas we relate and need each other, at the end of the day, every country protects its interest. And the information I want to give you, on the ICC, for example, the US citizens, the UK citizens can commit crime but have not assented to the ICC. They try their citizens in their local countries in their, in their legal systems. So we need to ensure that we build our systems, support it, and never surrender other international systems that do not meet our interest to take charge. To me, that's really the position. The U.S. government and American can commit crime here. That warrants ICC. A U.K. citizen can commit a crime, but they will be tried in the U.S., and the judicial procedure will be implemented according to the laws of U.S. and U.K. The same we should do according to our legal system. If it is weak, we should build it and strengthen it. That's the information I want to give you. I, I thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Elijah. Uh, you also have I'll something. Make a small one. I'll make a small one. Honorable, a Honorable Geoffrey There's a Ekanya. procedure, There's a procedure a, a matter. One. A small one. As I Th thank you, the Right Honorable Speaker. Arise on the matter of procedure on our rules of procedure 73. Issues about uh, iron seats. Members of parliament were willing to debate it. But when the matter went to court, we were debated. It is not that maybe MPs wanted not to discuss this matter about the lost or any misappropriation of the iron seats. I find it for us to engage again so much on the issues about the iron seats of Karamoja, and yet the matter is still even in court, not yet concluded. It is like we are in sub -judice. We are breaking our own rules. But again, even for somebody to write an indictment on one of us in this parliament in regards to iron seats, it is as if that person is not following our rules and the laws. Parliament of this country, which you are the chair, we have the rules. We move with our constitution. Article 79 prescribes very clearly our parliament is constituted. We have been mandated to make laws in this country. And it's a first somebody understanding to say that if this country, Ugandans, member of parliament, have made a law, with that law, they feel, they feel it's right for them to govern themselves and somebody should be referred to we move according to what our constitutions 
have, we have agreed upon. Madam Speaker, the procedural matter I am raising, yes. yeah, the procedural matter I'm raising, it is found in those two grounds, seven, Article 79 and then our rules, 73. We have been moving. Is it really procedural now for somebody to come here and start dragging us on the debate of iron seats? And yet we are patiently waiting for that time to be put off and we debate it out. We are aware of our court, our court of conduct in this house. The integrity, we are aware about it. The corruptions, whatever thing, we are not even pleased about it. Is it right for us to go back in that debate or move forward? I thank you.